Um, with, the, uh, uh, with a milder grade of uh, a milder grade of barotrauma, instead of blood, what happens is you'll develop blister fluid here in the middle ear. Now the blister fluid uh, can barely be, I think you can pick out here on the screen, bubbles that are forming in this fluid, which doctors call an effusion. And during the process of valsalva, when you pressurize your ears, these bubbles can be seen to grow. And, and so this little bubble right here on the top has ballooned into a larger bubble when you, uh, when you pressurize. So what I'd like to do now is show you this tool that I use in the office, not only for diagnosis, but to help teach people how to equalize. And again, I'd like to call on my daughter to, uh, to uh, sit here, and we'll go to a live uh, demonstration of the eardrum. <clears throat> so, uh, if, uh, let me know if this hurts, okay? So here we go. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, what, the ant's eye view of the ear. As the, as, and uh, as you can see, uh, we, uh, you, can, you can identify, hmm, I forgot to take my pointer in hand. You can identify the same anatomy that we were just talking about. Here's the malleus. Uh, that this little part here is called the umbo, the malleus, the short process or the lateral process. And, and this is a flexible part of the eardrum up here, the pars flaccida. Um, you can barely see a, black, a dark area right here, which is the, uh, the round window niche. And uh, uh, the uh, stapes, uh, the incus and the stapes right here. Now, uh, Melissa, why don't you uh, uh, plug your nose and pressurize your middle ear. Watch the eardrum now. Okay. And so what, what she just did is moved pressure. Thank you. Uh, is moved some pressure into the uh, eardrum. There's another volunteer here somewhere, uh -huh, the diver. And, uh, and uh, as you plug your nose and blow, Air goes up that eustachian tube and, uh, and into the middle ear. Have a seat. Now, you were just diving, I think, right? Yeah, I just got certified this week. Um, was in the pool Monday and Tuesday, open dive Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And I've had trouble being able to get the water out of my ears. So OK. So a new diver, you've been diving, what, three days? And um, what does this ear, what does your left ear feel like? Well, when you go to equalize, I mean, I can feel the water moving out. If I go to equalize, it squeaks. So you've got a little squeaking sensation. Yeah. Well, come, come over here. Let's take a look at this ear. Um, now, uh, this eardrum has been traumatized. And as you can see, uh, we've got fresh blood in the distribution right along near where the malleus and the eardrum join. This, uh, this fresh blood is, is caused, this bruise on the uh, tympanic membrane, is caused by the, the uh, force of the water pressure pushing the eardrum in and tearing little capillaries right across there. And that, of course, that causes a little dilation of blood vessels here. Now. Um, why don't you try to equalize once for me? Pressurize your middle ear. Let's see what happens. I'm going to blow a little harder. OK. So it's not really clearing very well for you, is it? No. OK. This one does. OK. Well, that's probably the reason that you, that you injured that ear, is because, we, because that's tighter on that side. Did you, did you find that when you were flying, that ear would clear sl more slowly or not? Yeah. And, and even driving, like up in the mountains. OK. So, thank you very much. Okay, uh, I'd like to go back now to our, to our slides. Um, but this is a very important history. Uh, uh, my um, uh, student diver here 
has a history of ear, one ear being uh, slightly more difficult to clear, slightly tighter than the other side. Now, uh, often you'll get this from, uh, uh, from students, but again, un until now we haven't had a tool, we haven't had a method in which we could, uh, we could uh, teach the diver a more positive way of uh, equalizing. And so that's what I want to do uh, now. I'd like to uh, concentrate for a moment on, on how we're able to uh, uh, learn about this stuff. You know, the, the, the anatomy of the, of the middle ear I talked about was described many years ago in the 1500s. But this Eustachian tube is, uh, is only surrounded by bone part way down toward the throat. The bottom part of the eustachian tube is, is surrounded by cartilage and, and muscle is attached to it as well. So the common sensation of crackling in your ears when you swallow is because these muscles, the levator muscles uh, of the soft palate, tug on the eustachian tube. So, uh, we'll be talking more about how swallowing and how movement of the muscles in the back of the throat affect the uh, patency. And in fact, you'll learn to put traction on those muscles. Um, the, uh, the ear fear I talked about before is uh, an important uh, syndrome to recognize because we know some people find uh, middle ear pressurization uncomfortable, and some of these folks have had bad ear problems as a child. Um, occasionally, you'll get a person who describes a sensation where air blows retrograde back up the tear duct and, and fizzes or bubbles out of one of the tear ducts, and that's, uh, it tickles or it's an uncomfortable sensation, and people aren't really sure whether that's dangerous to, you, to do or not. Uh, so th there's also, we, we as uh, diving instructors also create some confusion by telling our new divers not to blow too hard. We don't want to blow too hard or you'll hurt your ears. Well, um, that instruction to a person with tight eustachian tubes is confusing. It makes, it makes it difficult for someone to figure out just exactly how hard to blow. These are some of the techniques we'll be talking about. The Valsalva maneuver, the Toynbee maneuver, the Frenzel, this one, this French method here, the voluntary tubal opening, uh, and some combination techniques as well. The Valsalva maneuver is probably the, most, the easiest maneuver to learn. Most people have an intuitive sense of how to do this. That's plugging your nose, increasing the pressure in your chest, cheeks tight, and, um, and this maneuver is like a strain, like straining in the chest, like that. Well, it shouldn't really be a very prolonged maneuver, and this is where divers get into trouble, especially if a new diver has ear fear and is a little squeamish about pressurization. They'll start very slowly, and they'll build up pressure in their chest very slowly. And what happens is there, a lot of the, the uh, uh, vessels in the head become engorged, and it can inhibit venous return to the heart. So the Valsalva maneuver is great if you do it quickly, and if it's a nice, sharp oomph. But if it's done slowly, it can make you feel dizzy. It can make you feel odd. So. Uh, the Valsalva maneuver is not one that I teach right off. And of course, you never want to do a pressurization technique on ascent when you're diving, because uh, that can lead to uh, pulmonary problems. The method I like the best was first identified by um, this uh, colonel in the, uh, in the uh, uh, German Air Force and the Luftwaffe, who used to teach his dive bomber pilots how to, how to pressurize when they're making bombing runs. And I call it the throat piston because, because that's what you do with your tongue. In the, in, you raise up the tongue 
uh, with the glottis, with the vocal cords closed.